they just released jabbi mat recently yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people reached out and they were all like you know why aren't you doing something like this again i was <laughs> like bro like jabbi mat happens once in two decades or something it's the first time i did something of that nature was kamine yeah. and i do believe that kamine was ahead of its time i mm. think a film like kamine if it was to come out now would have a much wider audience wow. than what it had at that time i actually have a tendency of doing the opposite i don't like to run in the direction which everybody is running in i prefer to find my own path let's just say as a community the film fraternity has made in the last 3 or 4 years have uh, have not been good hmm. so we all have to come together to make stronger better clearer choices sure. when i look back at my own career i'm like uh, what was i thinking with some of the choices like you know kamine followed up by hadipa <laughs> and uh, you know heather followed up by r rajkumar so with family man because there is chellum sir in karzi so and abo tu rajan dikhe se puchna <laughs> that's really their universe yeah. hi guys this is himesh and welcome to pink villa today we have with us shahid kapoor who is Riding high on the success of his new re- release show, Farzi. Welcome to Pink Villa, Shahid. Thank you. Lovely he- having you here. Thank you, bro. And congratulations on Farzi for it. Thank you. Well, let's start this conversation by going back in time. I believe Raj and DK have been working on this subject of fake currency for a decade, and you have been associated with this for a while. How do you view the evolution of the subject from I think 2013, 14 to now? See the way a, a subject lands also depends on. the timing of when it lands the platform in which it lands in uh, how has it been developed is it in sync with the mood of the audience um so i feel whenever something finds the kind of success that farzi has found which is very rare because it it just blew up over the weekend it we were all chatting about the fact that it didn't feel like a ott show it felt like a film release <laughs> because with a ott show uh, what i was told because it's my debut was yeah. that it takes 2 uh, 3 weeks to really understand how it's performing because yeah. that's the nature in which it gets consumed the way farzi dropped and by literally in the in 24 to 48 hours i got hundreds of messages saying that we've finished the show you know so i was like what's going on <laughs> and then uh, one just realized that farzi was one of those really binge shows that people started and then they just wanted to finish it yeah. you know and that was amazing um so i think the timing of when farzi has come and the the choice of taking it to a longer form yeah. format and the fact that it had 7 8 years to marinate mm-hmm. uh, in terms of content it kind of i think became the best version of itself yeah. um so i think that was uh, very fortunate you know at that time it did feel bad one did feel bad that you know we had discussed the subject and somehow it wasn't coming together so we couldn't collaborate yeah. i remember feeling bad about that and uh, you know they were also like listen give us some time we'll figure this out and and you know at that time they were filmmakers they hadn't really yeah. entered uh, into the ott universe and now they're kind of like you know the avengers of the ott <laughs> universe you know they're killing it um so i think they came into their own the subject had time to be developed I reached a stage where I was looking to do something which was going to be different and challenging for me and I guess the audience is also ready for content of this nature. Uh when I started acting in 2003 um I had grown up watching certain type of content uh, you know and that was very uh it was not like just happy happy and you know that it was not that kind of content the content that I really enjoyed was kind of layered um and it was driven by uh characters and intense moments and drama and yeah. uh, uh comedy at the same time um uh and then i was looking for stuff like that but first of all i didn't even have a beard so i didn't look <laughs> the part to do anything you know which is and 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 also there were very few people attempting that yeah. um the first time i did something of that nature was kamine yeah. and i do believe that kamine was ahead of its time i mm. think a film like kamine if it was to come out now would have a much wider audience oh. than what it had at that time um so i think um the evolution of farzi i think has you know everything has uh, has been in our favor yeah. and uh, sometimes when that happens uh, you know magic happens and i think that's what True. happened with farzi it, it did extremely well and and i'm still very very yes. happy about it and happy to talk about it endlessly <laughs> <laughs> and you know 20 years back you made your acting debut as a big screen hero and now in 2023 it's a small screen debut for you yeah it's not a small screen it's, anymore it's actually though, yeah. i mean ott debut i mean that way yeah and you know if you look at it a lot has changed in terms of the dynamics of ott through the pandemic when was it that you realized that oh wow ott is the next big thing and i need to take a step into it? i don't chase the next big thing yeah um i think i don't fall in that category of personality yeah. um i actually have a tendency of doing the opposite 
Right. I don't like to run in the direction which everybody is running in. Mm-hmm. I prefer to find my own path and I prefer to um take up things that are challenging and that I really believe in mm-hmm. um deeply yeah. and inherently <laughs> my choices are not those of convention. Yeah. um so for me the choice of doing farzi actually happened uh, before the pandemic hit us okay. uh, my conversation with uh, rajan dk was kind of just before the actually one year before i actually said yes to farzi yeah. i started looking out for content okay. uh, ott content and i didn't find any i was like you know <laughs> i want to do something on ott because i had started enjoying watching ott a lot yeah. and i felt there was great merit in picking a part that allows you to kind of give the audience a long experience and kind of be sitting in their bed in their house in their comfort yeah. and consuming it as in how they want hmm. um because i think it makes a different kind of place uh, in the audience's heart which yeah. is different from going into a theater and being in a very social uh, yeah. kind of atmosphere environment uh, this is a very personal private kind <laughs> of thing which you can consume in the way you like yeah. to um so i wanted to do that but it took me a year to find uh, this the uh, story with rajin dk and then you know it took us 3 years to make it uh, but so i would say about 5 years uh, i was yeah. wanting to do something on the digital platform for almost 5 years now yeah. wow and you know you spoke about how you have always picked up unconventional characters through your journey yeah. are you attracted towards yeah, those from the vanilla one i am i am i hate that word vanilla <laughs> you know hate it i used to hate it when people say oh you're cute I so hate it i was like why would you say that to anybody <laughs> 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 I never liked that word. Yeah. Um I've learned to be graceful and accept it hmm. now that people throw it, you know, at you. Um but I just felt like it's very limiting. You know, you have to be an artist, hmm. which is what Farzi is all about. <laughs> uh so I think some of my personal angst is attached to Sunny in uh, Farzi and uh, I wanted to express myself. Yeah. You know, I wanted people to see my soul, to understand my emotions, to yeah. ex- experience my mind yeah. and not just, you know, stay busy with What's on the outside? That's important. It matters. You yeah, know, you, you want to look your best. I mean, that's great. But there has to be much more than that if you want to sustain over a long period of time, and if you want what you're doing to, um, you know, kind of be an expression of who you are, hmm. it needs to be much more than that. But you know, as an actor in the post-pandemic world, has your selection of subjects changed in any way? Be it for theatrical, OTT, hmm. any any format. see i think what happens is that all this this post pandemic pre pandemic yeah. uh, there is relevance to that to a certain degree yeah. uh you know we have to recognize patterns trends yeah. it's important to be aware of them but you should not start you know chasing those trends and those numbers because they are bound to change yeah. um and either you're ahead of the curve or you're behind the curve yeah. and if you're running after a trend in all probability you're behind the curve mm-hmm. um when you're ahead of the curve it's important to know how far ahead you are if you're just around the corner it's nice <laughs> if you're so far ahead that you know nobody gets you yeah. then that's a problem i've i've kind of been in all three spaces i've yeah. been ahead i've been on the curve and i've been behind the curve mm-hmm. so you know it's really about finding the sweet spot and uh, i think post pandemic the one thing that has happened is that the audience has a choice to decide where they want to watch what they want to watch yeah. earlier it was always if you're watching a movie you have to go to the theater you yeah. know that's just how it was if you want to watch the best actors the biggest stars the best content you must go to a theater mm-hmm. you know but that's not true anymore mm-hmm. i think there is great ca- content across the board um you know things like youtube shorts or uh, you know instagram um all those things are content yeah uh, you know people are consuming content in short format and long format so you are competing with everybody you're competing mm-hmm. with that you know 2 minute instagram video you're competing with a 15 minute youtube video mm-hmm. you're competing with everything you know you comp- so that is something that we need to be aware of okay. and we need to make choices which are um just you know i think uh, more responsible i think some of the choices that let's just say as a community the film fraternity has made in the last 3 or 4 years have uh, have not been good hmm. so we all have to come together to make stronger better clearer choices sure. with more awareness of where things are and mm-hmm. how the audience is feeling and how to keep them happy and satisfied because i do feel the magic of movie making whether it's an ott show or whether it's a movie in the yeah. big screen if you can make something good yeah. you just get a lot of love yeah. so you know you just have to work and work and work till you reach yeah. that place where the audience just feels like they want to give you all their love because yeah. they're waiting to give it to you yeah. but we've been disappointing them so mm-hmm. i think the fault is in us 
and it's not in the audience. audience. You know, you spoke about love. You know, Farzi has got so much love from yeah. the audience. Yeah. What does success mean to you as a as an actor? And has that definition or what it means to you changed in the last twenty years? Yes, I think the definition of success in general has changed. I think for me, success is much more uh, all encompassing. Uh, it's not just about a hit film or yeah. a flop film. Um, or you know, it's about life. Mm-hmm. Um, as you as you grow older, you understand that. You'll go through various phases. There'll yeah. be many spikes. Mm-hmm. But what you want to do is you want your general state of being to be elevated. Yeah. Uh, you want to be a better version of yourself mm-hmm. slowly, and steadily. Yeah. You know, is the best way to move up. Yeah. Um, spikes are actually disturbing because when something happens which is an anomaly, <laughs> um, it actually creates confusion mm-hmm. because you don't know whether you're that or whether you're that or like what's going on. Yeah. But when you have a few spikes. What happens is that your your overall ratio of success or your ratio of quality kind of starts slowly building up. Yeah. So I think it's about looking at long term and it's about sustenance mm-hmm. and it's about growth yeah. uh, and holding on to what you have. Uh, it's easy to find sudden success. Yeah. Um, the challenge is to sustain. Sustain and that will come with a lot of failures in the middle. Mm-hmm. But you have to look forward. You know, you have That's to just keep moving forward. You know, have nice, strong strides. Keep going. Yeah. Believe in yourself. And good and bad will come and go. Be a better version of yourself. Yes. Whether it is uh, with people, when you engage and interact with people, that's been my biggest learning uh, mm-hmm. post pandemic. I was, I, I, I am, I was, I am a very uh, work obsessed kind of person in the in the sense that I get very passionate about what I do. Yeah. Um, and 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 my beha- behavior. Many times was governed by how I was feeling about what I am doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes that's understood. Sometimes it doesn't get yeah. on. People are wondering like, what's going on, right? Yeah. So I have learned to, without taking away from what I am doing, uh, balance that aspect of my personality, which is to make people feel comfortable. Um, I was never concerned about that. Yeah. I was like, that's not what I'm here for. You yeah. know. Um, but as you grow older, you understand that everything matters. Uh, you know, so you have to learn to. No, that everything matters, and we need to focus ourselves on everything, and that is what, to me, success is. Exactly. And how do you view your journey as an actor through the last twenty years? Ish, ish, to now. It's been pretty uh, psychotic, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when I look back at my own career, I'm like, uh, what was I thinking with some of the choices? Like, you know, Kamini followed up by Haripa, <laughs> and uh, you know, Heather followed up by R. Rajkumar. Uh, I don't know what is going on with me, <laughs> uh, you know. So, um, so yeah, it's been a learning curve, mm-hmm. and uh, I hope that I can. Uh, I, I know sometimes it's not welcome, but I keep telling Meera and Ishan that a lot of the times. I'm like, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes. So, my mistakes to you, I'll tell you. But they're like, you know, go to hell. We're our own people, and we'll make our own choices. Uh, but yeah, you learn from your mistakes, and I've made many. But I'm very proud of you know the last twenty years. I feel very l- lucky. There's mm-hmm. a lot of gratitude that I have that I am here, twenty yeah. years later. I'm very proud of some of the work that I have done in terms of quality of work. Yeah. I am generally proud of everything that I have done because everything is a stepping stone to get to where you want to get. Yeah. Um, and um, and I feel like I'm very young at heart as an artist <laughs> still. I think there's a lot left within me uh, yeah. to express. And uh, I'm very quietly uh, um, ambitious. I okay. don't like to, uh, you know, shout and jump and make noise. That's not my style. Yeah. Um, I like my work to speak for itself. Hmm. Um, but there is still a lot of ambition within. How it will unfold, only time will tell. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's a lot more that I feel that I need to do. Is there any particular genre that you wish to explore now? Yeah, I want to do something that's not so serious now. Yeah. Something a little lighter. You know, in fact, this film I'm doing right now uh, with Madik Films, which yeah. has me and Kriti in it. Yeah, that's a lighter film. You okay. know, like uh, a lot of people, uh, they just released Jabhi Mat recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people reached out and they were all like, you know, why aren't you doing something like this again? I was <laughs> like, bro, like Jabhi Mat happens once in two decades or something. It's not like every day. Yeah. You know, most of the films you do in that genre are pretty bad. You yeah. know, so you want to pick a decent one. Uh, you know. In fact, me and Imtiaz were also chatting. I was like, "Dude, like, find something, man." And he was also like, "Okay, okay, let me think." Um, so I want to do all types of genres. I want to do something fun and exciting as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, see, as an actor, it depends from on what comes. Yeah. So when somebody has put something together which is exciting, you go ahead and you collaborate. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's a smarter way of doing it mm-hmm. because you can't 
just be focusing on what you want to do because something like that might not come along the way mm-hmm. you know and then you'll be forcing it into yes, you know the and it's not required but well, you know when you talk of comedies or lighter films there's anis was me film which is there in the yes, conversation so yes. many people yeah, want you to see it. in yes. no so I, i mean we're definitely going to collaborate and anis bhai and me have been chatting and he's developing some stuff yeah. and uh, when it's ready and it's baked like i said you should yeah. let things marinate yeah. never be in a rush to finish something or start something yeah. it will when it feels right you should go for it and he also has the maturity he's been here for so many years he also yeah. understands that and i'm sure we will do something together yeah. in fact we are in the process of putting it together yeah. so hopefully it will happen soon and last couple of question you have two films i believe yeah. for release this year one yeah. is uh, the bloody daddy and yes. one is the madoc film the madoc film could you tell us something on those two subjects like what can we expect well, from well bloody daddy is um it's a very edgy yeah. uh, action it's uh, the story of one night yeah. um and uh, it has a lot of action yeah. it's a cool film uh it i would say it falls in the category of a john wick yeah. you know it's that kind of a film and uh, it's uh, it's quirky uh it has a really nice cast and uh it's a different action film i think a fresh kind of film for me and ali to do together yeah. um and uh, we've had uh, great fun doing it and uh, yeah it'll be out middle of this year and then there is the magic film which i said is a high concept quirky love story uh with yes with quite a bit of humor um not slapstick humor but yeah. like you know nice natural chill yeah. uh, uh family warm that kind of stuff um and it's high concept so that you'll see when yeah. the promo comes out hopefully um uh, so that's going to be a fun film and uh, yeah that's got that's me kriti and new directors yeah. amit joshi is the director he's new yes. and uh, he collaborates with aradhana uh, both of them write together okay. they're a writing combo and now they're making their first film and you know farzi has an open ending have you discussed farzi to with rajan dik and also farzi i don't think they have also discussed it no? amongst themselves uh, yeah i mean i think uh, what they like to do is they like to first see how people are responding yeah. and once they have all the information what of course what inherently is within the subject is within the subject yeah. everything has been taken to a boiling point and yeah. we i think it's kind of like left there yeah. uh, which i think is amazing i think that yeah. doesn't happen every time Uh, the way everything kind of came together to end the season uh, was really magical yeah. and so we have to live up to that uh, mm-hmm. you know it's very important to live up to that yeah. and they have a great team sita and sumana fantastic writers yeah. and uh, so i'm sure they'll come up with something and i'll be waiting to hear from Hopefully them what they have also with family man because there is chellum sir in farzi so and abu to rajan dik se puchna <laughs> that's really their universe yeah. uh, every everything is possible yeah. you know but it's really about what is right yeah uh you shouldn't do something just for the heck of it so it has to blend in nice. in a manner that's natural and that can take that journey forward and all that so so you know let them think about it and i'm sure they'll do a great job because they always do perfect thank you so much and wish you all the best for all thank you brother thank, thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.